an Oscar Wilde quote, and all at once, summer collapsed into fall. Or at least I think it's an Oscar Wilde quote. No one seems to know where it's from, and it may be a case of internet telephone. Nonetheless, every year I think of this quote, and it reminds me to savor the first signs of fall as summer comes to a close, so that my favorite season doesn't pass me by too quickly. This year, fall has been truly spectacular. Here's a little look at what we've been up to. Well, we're ready for the first part of winter, at least. The barn is loaded with hay. We have a glove bucket, but I tell you, I gotta start having my own pair. You just dumped it? Yeah, they're all like dead, so they're compost now. This is still doing something, so I like that. I think gardeners have to be uniquely efficient. You kind of have to be a little bit. I mean, that's what, why it's like different gardeners take different approaches, right? Some you have people, to be kind of ruthless. Well, so you're right. You kind of have to be ruthless if you want it to look neat and tidy at all times. But some people don't really care about it looking neat and tidy. Some people garden for like wildlife. Some people garden for just pretty flowers. Some people love trees. It's just like... That's kind of it. It's like cooking. You just do what you feel is you According do you. According to your priorities. Yeah, you do you. Do you think the internet finds it offensive that I sometimes speak in a British accent? Only if the accent's bad. <laughs> <laughs> won't overwinter here in our zone so we have to dig them up and um, dry them and store them over the winter and then next spring we can replant them in the ground and these were really beautiful we use these for cut flowers um, all summer and uh, they were a super pretty giant like saucer sized orange flower um, and this year we didn't do the best of job staking them. Uh, we didn't like support them necessarily enough. So we ended up getting kind of like shorter stems and maybe we weren't pruning them right. So excited to replant this next year and try again. And um, I think they'll be even better next year. Cause also the, when we first planted them, maybe the, the tubers were like, or the amount of tubers was also like maybe half of what you see here. So they really, this plant really grew a lot over this, the course of the summer. And um, I think they'll grow back even stronger next year. So really exciting. Uh, we'll see how this goes next year. So do you have to separate those? You can, like this, I think like these, like this is already kind of two plants here. I'm just even gonna, oh. like they're, they're already, they're ready. To come they're already ready to come apart. So. I would use the shoes. Yeah, right or should I say the secateurs? There you go. Two. So now this is this is two plants. Um, Last year we realized just how many flowers we need to make a big impact. So this year we got probably triple the amount of bulbs that we started with last year, which is really saying something. So this year we're planting them. In the next two weeks, we're expecting it to get down to frosty temperatures in the 20s and at night. So it's the perfect time to plant our bulbs. Last year we planted fall bulbs, but we planted them. I don't think we realized how densely you have to plant uh, these fall spring bulbs in order for them to really look great in the spring because they looked kind of sparse and kind of spotty. So not making that same mistake this year. I pre-ordered, I think 300 tulip bulbs and we have some 400 uh, daffodil bulbs to plant around the place. So 
hopefully next year we'll get even prettier spring flowers. Okay. So as you can see, they're quite close. So we're hoping for a, a fireworks show as the plant people say. So in this bed, we used to have uh, boxwood hedges um, and my dad and Justin pulled them out last year because they were kind of diseased looking and didn't look great. So um, then this last summer, we just kind of threw uh, seeds, flower seeds in here, cosmos and zinnia, and it was really pretty. So I think we're gonna do that again next year. But before that, we're planting spring bulbs so that um, we get beautiful tulips, daffodils and grape hyacinth that will bloom in early spring and then after they're done, we can kind of spread seeds for those annual flowers uh, for summer. So we have a spring display and a summer display, which succession planting is the goal when it comes to flowers. And hopefully we only have to do this once because these are perennials, they'll come back every year. Generally, I don't like digging up a bed like this because you want to maintain the soil structure, but when you're planting this many bulbs, you're kind of, you're kind of digging, you're digging anyway, so you might as well make your life easier, I think. garden maintenance is underway. Hey. The okra is completed for the year. Still have giant scallions. They're not so tender, but they are extra scallion-y. The radishes are popping. Oh, don't you love it? It's so cool. They love this weather. They love this yeah, look, look how big they got. They got like, I mean, they're not huge, but they're good size for growing so close together. Yeah, how about we pop some of these? It's coming out. Sure. Okay, let's do it. No. It is juicy. It's just short. Yeah, it's that's nice. It looks good, though. Yeah, it does look good. Yeah, that looks good. What is this? Some kind of mustard. Chinese mustard greens in progress. Carrots are still going strong. Those are carrot seeds. Oh my gosh. Our carrots are going to flower. Very exciting. Uh, this carrot looks ready. Let's see how big it is. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good carrot. I tell you, this year the carrot harvest. I don't know what we did right. Wow. Look! Wow, that's a nice one. 
It's as tall as you in the camera. <laughs> You know, clearly it grows. It's still growing. You know, isn't it the malanto or whatever? Yes, it's malanto. You know, you should you should do an Instagram and tell people it's like you know what. Clearly, it it grows like all season. And then you, what you do is you pinch the tender top, and then what you do is you blanch it, and then you mix it with the tofu gan, and then it turns into a dish. We have the recipe. You link it. Look. I mean, I could do that right now if I want to. It's not fertile enough. A lot of weed competition. We should uh, we should harvest them right now because they have they have like flower already. Yeah. Look at this tough, tough toy. Yeah, that's for the chicken now. It's, really? Yeah. It's, it's the spinach so... too didn't do much. No. You see these? No, you see these weeds didn't. like over here? How could I not take the uh, 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 take the little tiller and go over that and just till everything in? How could I not do it? No, no. So what do you do? You, this is like this is like a carpet to, of weeds. You have to remove them and then do what I said, which is cover them for the winter. Cover the entire bed for the winter. Right there. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. It's kind of here, eh? So wet. That's why they put a little swale there. It's not pretty, but it is food. Leave it, throw it right here. Oh, I see it. I see. Oh my goodness. It's all too small. I love this. Damn. They're like pre made french fries. These are nice. There's more over here. Okay, this is where they all are, right here. Okay, right here. So let me rinse it. Oh, watch. All right. <gasps> That's a big one. Well, Nice. It's a good one. Oh, there's another one there. Gnarly. Very satisfying crop. These are sweet potatoes. Yes, there he is. These are purple. Yeah. Oh my god. You happy with your harvest? I wish they were bigger. <laughs> what a glorious yam harvest. I will say though that we kind of were thinking that these would be purple. Next year, purple yams. Today is a rare day where the chickens and the ducks get to be out. Ever since we had our accident, we've been a lot more cautious. Unfortunately, Frilly slash Diana Ross is still a bit of a loner, but she's hanging in. What is that? That's Chloe. You threw it in front of her face. She doesn't even see it. Come on, girl. Come on. Maybe she's scared to eat it. That's why I like put it away. Her feathers are all white. You think she's stressed? I don't know what that means. You mean she's turning gray? Or her hair. That's what I'm saying. She's turning gray? A little bit. Maybe. Come on. <laughs> Get a couple. Get a couple. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Introduce the ducks. You know what I mean? The gray one is feather. The gray duck is feather. The light brown is sloan. And the dark brown is Esmeralda because she has that little shot of blue. Let's see. Oh, they buried it. Look at that. They buried oh, it. Yeah. Look at that. Here you go. 
Can you keep that door open for me? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Just wait. Ooh, there's four. Wow! See that? That's a lot. Wait, that's like from yesterday and today, right? Yeah, yesterday and today. But there, we, I kept two there, so I, I want to encourage them to, to lay the eggs. But so between yesterday and today, there were only two. <laughs> <laughs> so Pretty good see. though, still. Yeah, and they're getting big. And they're like a little bit cleaner, I think. Well, if they, if they, yeah, if they well, lay them here. Well, they're looking after them a bit more. Yeah. Look at that, they hit them. to flooding. There's a little bit there, but dry in the animal pen. And perfect little stream. My mom calls this walkway Fifth Avenue, which means that down there it's lower Manhattan. Call the lower pond. This whole area got dug up. And now we've laid down grass seed and straw, and hopefully the lawn will bounce back. Pond project is complete, which is very exciting. And you know, I had my doubts. The whole thing was dredged. There was mud and disgustingness all along here, but it really worked out. My dad can be, how do we say, obsessive about things like this, but it's all good. My dad's hard work building the upper stream. It's great when it rains because all this water definitely has a place to go before it kind of just flooded out over the lawn. And it's still a bit damp here because we are sort of in New Jersey wetlands, but now we have a little babbling brook. Some of that water from the upper stream comes and feeds into the pond, the main pond. I am not kidding when I say that my dad was truly a perfectionist about the placement of this waterfall and every stone and making sure that they all fit together. Like literally my parents were like out here being like, put that rock there, put that rock there. So, but I have to say, it's really nice. Thank you. 